may happen. Or if if I keep selling you something that is not congruent with the biblical model of how God refines people, sanctifies people, transforms people, it seems like failure may be a tool in God's hands. There's certain things you may learn in a mess up that you don't learn in a victory. There's certain things that you may learn in in it not working all the way out that prepares you for it to work all the way out. Do you understand what I'm saying? And if you do not get a healthy relationship with failure, you will stay paralyzed at the point that your faith needs to kick in. So so, so what I wanted my first point to be is something that would would be really just um, truth. It's fake to act like you never fail. If you're one of those believers who, who, who to get saved, you had to literally admit, I'm a failure. Can't do this without you, God. I'm nothing without you. And then after that, somehow you're supposed to now never fail again. Yeah. And you judge people who do. Church people are the worst at kicking their fallen heroes. The same people you went to the conference for. If they mess up and under the pressure that they were under, we just, boom, they ain't nothing. They shouldn't be allowed. They can't. And the Bible clearly says, he said, um, those of you who are spiritual, I need you to restore those who fall in gentleness. I need you to remember that you have the same capacity to experience the same thing. But for some reason, it's like when we come to God as a failure, we don't think that failing is a part of the equation anymore. And today I want to give you the ability to reframe, refocus, and renew your mind about failure. Okay? Let's go together. Many people's ability to walk in faith is being hindered by the illusion of failure in the future. Write it down. Many people's ability to walk in faith presently is being hindered by the illusion of failure in the future. If you knew you couldn't fail, what would you do tomorrow? I'm talking, I'm I'm walking heavy today. If you knew that you couldn't fail, what would you do to I want you to really answer that question. Would you actually write the business plan if you knew that what you wrote could actually happen? Would you actually move to the city God told you to? If knowing nobody, not having it what you need, or what, if you knew somehow this is gonna work out. Somehow, with God on my side, and with this little bit of faith that I got, it's only the size of a mustard seed. But with this little bit of faith, God said in the word, I can move mountains. And most people will not do the thing that they know God. He's confirmed it 52 times over 10 years to you. And you still sitting here, but like, Lord, what about what about this apartment that you gave me? He said, I'll give you another one. <laughs> Are you holding on to all this for that house? You holding on all this for that status? Well, I just don't want to go home on Thanksgiving. You know, my family is ruthless. They would gross me if I told them that I actually left medical school to actually follow God in this other event. If God be for... Not if your family be for you. Okay, I know this is heavy. But there are many times you will have to walk out a faith step in the face of the people you love disagreeing with what God has called you to do. I'm just going to tell you the truth. I want you to get them. Oh, God. You want everybody to agree with you, and they won't. Because God didn't speak to them. And if you're waiting for the confirmation to come from somebody who doesn't pray. Do not understand. 
understand how you are wanting somebody who does not have a relationship with God to confirm to you that God told you to do something. What? Well, they got so many years of wisdom, and they've been disobedient for years. Money does not... Well, they're a guru in this space, and God's hand is not on them. This is what I'm telling you. Saul was still in position as king when God had taken his hand off of him. He don't listen to me. He won't obey me. I'm not talking to him no more. And if you do not get your eyes off of people who have been successful, but God's not speaking to them the way he's speaking to you, you will find yourself in the wrong spot. Hear what I'm saying to you. You have to make sure that you're okay walking in the tension. This this relationship may not make it. Because they don't believe what God has called me to do. Okay. Or maybe this relationship is going to be suspended in the level of intimacy. Because everything doesn't have to be cut off. Sometimes they just don't need as much access. Oh God, I'm getting... So, 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 man, I'm I'm done with you, unfollow... No, you're being dramatic, stop. Because maybe in a different season, we will have the space, the capacity, and emotional awareness to be able to actually do something with that. But at this current moment, can't come to you when I'm still deciding for myself if I'm going to obey God. Because your two cents of doubt is going to take me over and I'm going to be in the deficit. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Okay. So, 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 so many people's ability to walk in faith is being hindered by the illusion of failure in the future. But on the flip side, many people's ability to walk in faith is being hindered by the impact of failures in the past. So it's both ends. Some of us are scared because we don't know what's going to happen. And some of us are scared because we do know what happened last time. The last time I did this, when I stepped out in faith the last time, and, 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 and today I want to talk to both groups of people soberly, having walked on both sides of that pendulum. Having had to live in the tension of, of things that I've done working out really good and, 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 and then things that I've done working out really bad. And then God's saying, all right, get up on the horse again. Let's try it again. Yeah. And I'm like, Lord, I'm t- um, <laughs> was it last time enough? No, we walked by. Last time wasn't enough until you come and meet me. I will always put a faith project in front of you. Did y'all hear what I just said? Until we go and meet our Savior, there will be a faith project in front of you personally. And if you keep ignoring that faith project, what you are doing is delaying your fruit. I want fruit, not without faith. You cannot have fruit without faith. And you cannot have faith without building in a measure of failure. All right. Maybe we don't just need a healthy relationship with failure. Maybe we need a holy relationship with failure. Like, like, like that word holy means set apart. When I fail, I'm looking at it like, God, what are you trying to do with me? How are you setting me apart by this thing not working how I intended for it to work? What are you trying to carve out of me? What are you trying to carve me into? What are you trying to scrape off the sides of my heart or my soul? What are you trying to redirect in my language? How are you trying to use this moment that seems like a failure right now to set me apart? I found a guy who's an Olympic failure in the Bible. Um, He has the gold, silver, and bronze medal at failing. His name is Peter. And and, and many times we look at Peter's life and um, we don't fully realize, this is what I realize, how close to Judas Peter was. Everybody dogs Judas for betraying Jesus. But Peter was kind of at the same caliber. (laughs) 
I can prove it to you in the Bible. I'm going to walk through this. The difference between Judas and Peter is when Judas betrayed Jesus. That was the end of his story. He didn't go past the failure. He let those little coins be the end of the failure. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Peter, just a few chapters later, does the exact yeah, yeah, same yeah. thing for no money. <laughs> he didn't even get paid for it. It was a little girl. They're like, that's your mom, Jesus. Like, I don't know Jesus. Don't be telling me I don't know Jesus. I don't know Jesus on the set. I don't know Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> he denied him. And why do we? Oh, don't be the Judas. Nobody be like, don't be the Peter. Why? Because Peter did not let his failure be the end. He kept pursuing Jesus after the failure. I don't know who needs to hear this right now, but you do not fail if you keep pursuing Jesus after the failure. And today I want to encourage you to do the same thing by looking at his life because many of us again are paralyzed and we're going to go down in history with this. Uh, I thought God was going to do it and God's standing there like, I'm trying to. So when I found Peter in, in John chapter 21, verse uh, 3, it says, Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. Now, I, I, I love context in the Bible because we just read these things like it's just like really calm and peaceful. But like Jesus has just died. Like everybody's scared. The disciples are freaking out. He's sitting there with the guilt and shame on him that he denied Jesus three times and never got to tell him I'm sorry. And I think he was stressed. And the disciples like, what are we doing today? He's like, ah, I'm going fishing. <laughs> Y'all know how sometimes you do things just to like, I got to get out of here. I'm going for a drive. <laughs> what other things y'all do? Like when you get to that point, what's that? Uh, somebody said, I go to drink. Uh, stop. Hold on. Wait. Wait a minute. <laughs> Come back. Okay. I'm supposed to wait. Huh? wait hold on. Wait. I'm going shopping. <laughs> like, and someone's like, there you go. And, uh, all of them is real. The reason I'm saying those things is because all of us have something that when we get overwhelmed, I'm going. And I think this is where we find Peter, and this gives a better context. He says, I'm going fishing. And it's homeboys was like, well, um, okay, well, we'll come too. And it says, so they went out in the boat, but they caught nothing all night. This is another failure. If this is your profession, if you are a fisherman and you fish in these waters all the time and you know when to go out and you know where the fish are at and you know where the schools go and you know the sun and the tide and all this other stuff. So you set out at the right time, on purpose, with the right people who know how to do what you do and you did it for a long time at the tune of all night and you caught not a shrimp. I mean, I went fishing, but at least let me catch a crab or a squirrel. The Bible says they caught nothing all night. That would have been considered another what? Failure. They're sitting in a failure. In verse 4, at dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach. But the disciples couldn't see who he was. He called out, fellows. I don't know why <laughs> Turn fellows Like you got a British accent right there Have you caught 10 fish? And Jesus being petty right here Cause he know They ain't come Why you asking me if we caught catch any fish? You know this business didn't work dog You know this relationship didn't work you know this last church I went through didn't work. You know that my eyebrows is not working with me right now. You know this, Lord. But sometimes when God asks a question, it's never to find out an answer. It's for you to locate where you are. 
If he knows everything, he's not trying to figure out, did you? He knew you didn't catch no fish. He's trying yeah. to set the stage for a miracle by your self-awareness. So if you didn't think yeah. you were broken, God may ask you, are you tired of being broken? Yeah. And if your answer is, I ain't broken, he'd be like, cool. <laughs> Until you recognize you need me, I'll let you sit in that. I'm telling you, all throughout the Bible, in the garden, when he asked Adam and Eve, where are you? Do you think he lost them? There's only two of them on the whole planet. He didn't lose them. He was trying to give them an opportunity to locate themselves. And, and, and this is part of what we have to do as believers, is be self-aware enough to be able to say, where am I really at? Am I acting like my life is good? Am I acting like I'm paid but I really feel empty? Am I acting like I have a stronger relationship with God but it actually is quote scriptures that I steal from somebody else's page and I read them as I post them? I'm going to get back to the word. Fellows, have you caught any fish? No. <laughs> like they didn't even explain like oh. <laughs> then he said watch this throw out your net on the right hand side of the boat and you'll get some hold on I'm in the middle of a failure and somebody I don't know cause the bible says they didn't know it was Jesus yeah yeah yells out an instruction that honestly if I'm not thinking about it correctly insults my intelligence yeah. Yeah, yeah. you caught anything? no do something different <laughs> throw the net on the right side it's a, you ever seen the mechanics that be having the cigarettes that just be like like that's what y'all know what I'm talking about it feel like in, in my mind I'm sorry my, I see things like movies in my mind it's like ah oh, look throw that throw that thing <laughs> throw that thing on the right side and you catch some now watch this the fact is Peter's in a season of layered failures. Has anybody ever been in that season before? Okay, where are, are the real people? I said, has anybody ever been in a season of layered failures? Is somebody saying I'm in it right now? Come on, let's be honest. Okay, is anybody in a season of layered failures right now? Okay, I just need to make sure I'm at the right church. Because the thing is, the failure is not going to define us. Because we're about to learn what to do with this failure, okay? Peter is in the midst of a layered failure. The guy that he left everything to follow, Jesus, is dead. He's running for his life, okay? He denies Jesus three times and doesn't get to say sorry. So he's dealing with the guilt, the shame, and the frustration of that. And now, he's done the one thing that he thinks he knows how to do. And catches nothing. For most of us, that would be enough to jump off the boat and drown ourselves. No, let's be honest. Hey, y'all, it's been a good run. Don't tell anybody. Mom, I'm out of here. But look what Peter has the faith to do. In the midst of failure. He says, hey, y'all. Pull up the net. What are we doing? Y'all heard that voice that had no clarity. We don't know who it is, but we sense that there's something in the words that he said. Yeah. Throw it on the other side. We'll never throw it on the other side. We ain't called nothing doing it on this side. 